Hi everyone, it's a pleasure to be here with you today. I think the most opportune possible time to talk about the theme that we have here today, which is navigating through crises. Every segment in the world and industry has gone through volatility like we've never seen before. Crises of a kind unprecedented. And yet, all of us have learned to not just deal with the crises, but to overcome the crises, to build a new rule book, which helps us navigate crises. All of you are the ones who've been out there navigating the crises from the front, converting crises into opportunities and learning new ways of doing things. As I've had conversations with many partners and dealers through the last two years, I personally have learned a lot. What I'm going to bring forward today are some learnings and thoughts out of multiple conversations that we've had with stakeholders on what is the best way to navigate a crisis. And I would like to start by saying that Sometimes the word crisis can overwhelm us. It puts us, as one would say in cricketing terms, on the back foot. We tend to become defensive and we don't see opportunities where there actually indeed may be opportunities. The often used cliche is never waste a crisis because in crises, there are things that we can do which we otherwise would not want to do or would not be able to do. I just want to start by talking about where does value creation happen. And I'm of course going to talk about value creation in our business, which is the overall automotive industry, including every segment. Because when we understand value creation, we'll know what element of the value chain is the one which presents opportunities. So I would always like to think about saying the value chain will make money and create viability only if we have a strong viable proposition. A strong viable value proposition is one where the customer is wowed, wants more of that value, and that proposition, and that enables everyone in the chain to become viable and make money. If any one member of the value chain is making disproportionate profits, then it doesn't allow us to offer the right value to the customer. And we may end up overpricing our products. And sometimes, we may underprice our products and that compresses value and viability for everybody in the value chain. So really creating value is about finding the right level of viability for every partner in the value chain. Who are the partners in the value chain in our quest to create delighted customers? Of course, our dealers, financiers, brokers, OEMs, suppliers, and multiple others who participate in this process. In this process of creating value, there are trade-offs and there are conflicts. The originator of the value creation, which is us as OEMs in a way in this industry, have to think about how we will create vibrancy and viability for each of our partners. And hence, what is the right level of profit retention that should happen by the OEM, what, that should happen by the dealer, that should happen by the financier, that should happen by the supplier, in a way that the business creates enough volume. At the end of the day, I often say that, you know, getting over-focused on margins for anyone 
us as OEMs, dealers or financiers, takes away from the larger objective of saying, how do I make more money? And making money is a multiplication of volume by margin per unit. As I often talk to our partners, we get into this discussion around percentage margin and what is the right metric. In my understanding, the best way to measure and we do that in our company as well, is what is our return on capital employed. If we are putting in X amount of money, what is the absolute return that I'm getting? Sometimes a three-wheeler business where the margins are low may have a better ROC than some other business. Why does that happen? That happens because the absolute value of capital that's getting engaged may be lesser than in some other segment in which you may have a higher margin, but you're also engaging a large amount of capital. The other factor to look at is what's the risk. Some propositions are very low risk and hence the probability of success by implication is much higher. And as they say, the return on capital is also a function of risk. There are businesses which are very high risk. When you are in a business with very high risk, you would expect a much higher return on capital invested. There are businesses with surer returns, lesser risks, and then the return on capital is at a lower level than those with high risks. So often we tend to use the same yardstick without thinking about risk return models. And very often we talk about margins without worrying about what is that margin per unit going to get multiplied by. If you make a huge amount of margin, but you don't have the volume, which means you're not creating market success, which means you're not creating a delighted customer, nobody in the chain is going to make enough money. So I'm coming back to what it is like to navigating in a crisis. A very important part of navigating in a crisis is about creating open collaborative dialogues. Dialogues around, which are built on a foundation of trust, which allows us to have this kind of conversation on, at the end of the day, all of us in the value chain will succeed only if the customer is happy. Lots of customers come to buy our products. If lots of customers come to buy our products, we can all make money. And then we've got to make sure that every part of the value chain finds, like I use the word, viability and vibrancy while doing so. A crisis gives us an opportunity to reinvent. What are the norms that we can reinvent in a retail chain and in a partnership? A critical part is what's the appropriate level of investment. The investment may be in infrastructure, the investment may be in inventory on the part of the retail channel partners. And every OEM has to think about if you have to create viability or we have to create viability for our channel partners, how do we ensure that the trade-offs are looked at to deliver ROC or uh, return on the capital? How much is the investment? Can we optimize that? Investment can be in stocks or infrastructure. And what is the return per unit? And if we are able to maximize the return per unit and minimize the investment per unit, we'll create a vibrant business model. Change is around us. We need to reinvent the way we do things. All of us are learning new things every day. As things get more digital, are we using newer ways of marketing? The two recent brand launches that we've had of Thar and XUV700, fortunately, and uh, we're very pleased that they've been very successful launches, have happened with completely, depending on new age marketing, a lot of digital. We haven't used conventional media channels. We've been able to create impact in a new way. And we all learn out of these experiences because crises 
forces us to rethink our existing way of doing things, forces us to transform our thinking. We are all entrepreneurs in a way, all of you are entrepreneurs here or can think like entrepreneurs. A very important part of that entrepreneurial thinking is about how you create a purpose and a vision for your business. Where do you want to take your business? What are the kinds of investments you want to put in to create that kind of a business and how do you moderate that with time? There is a very interesting book and if you don't want to read the book a uh, talk on YouTube or TED by this author called Simon Sinek called The Infinite Game. In that he talks about how we often tend to think about short term battles and short term wins and don't realize that the real purpose led organizations are those who play an infinite game. Does not mean that you don't play short term wins, but what is the larger purpose which brings us here? As a part of a larger purpose, what do we need to build our brand? When a customer is buying a product, there are multiple brands at play. There is the OEM brand, but there is also the dealer brand. In my experiences, I have seen and a lot of that in rural, very often the dealer brand may be even stronger and more powerful than the OEM brand. Customer is buying from a retail outlet or a proprietor with whom the customer has built a relationship. That is the power of the retail brand. That retail brand brings customers in as well and it works the other way. However strong the OEM brand is, if the retail brand is weak because service has not been good, people are leaving often, customer experiences are not good, customer goes and buys some other brand, does not buy the preferred OEM brand. So really we are in a collaborative business where brands are built collaboratively. Your brand as a retail brand is as important or even more important than us as an OEM brand. You as a representative of our brands can swing the game either way. But you do that when you have a purpose and that purpose is around how you will create long term engaging relationships with customers. So really whether you are in a crisis or otherwise, there are some fundamentals of business and life which always hold good. What is your purpose? What is your vision? How are you building your brand? Are you playing for the long term? How are you ensuring the right optimization between costs and value creation, the services that you offer? And as we think about how we make money in the business, this becomes very important. But at the end of the, the day, it is a partnership. We all make money in the chain when we have delighted customers. So my submission to all of you is let us play for the long run. Let us create equitable sharing of profits based on risk and investments. And I am sure together we can overcome and transform ourselves through any crises by leveraging and picking up on the opportunities that come our way. It has been a pleasure to share my thoughts with you, unfortunately not in person, but look forward to doing that soon. Meanwhile, have a great, great summit and seminar. Thank you so much.